everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Get Ready. And really excited. I know I'm, I always say I'm really excited, but I am really excited because <laughs> I bring such awesome people here. And this is definitely an awesome person who I have known about for a very long time. And we've almost connected several times over the years. And I'm so excited to finally be here with the amazing Janet Atwood. Janet, say hi. <laughs> hi, you guys. I'm so happy to be here. And Brad, it's so sweet, you know, because we've been kind of, kind of, kind of. And now yeah. finally, right? Finally, then, here we are. Oh, so cool, though. It was instant kaboom, wasn't it? Like, yeah. right when we saw each other, it yeah. was like, oh, there's my old friend. <laughs> we are <a> tribe. <laughs> and, I've, and I've known that since hearing of the passion test many years ago, even before I knew anyone who knew you and, and had any kind of connection. So real quick for anyone who doesn't know uh, about you, Jan is the co-author of the New York best uh, the New York Times bestseller, The Passion Test, The Effortless Path to Discovering Your Life Purpose, and Your Hidden Riches, Unleashing the Power of Ritual to Create a Life of Meaning and Purpose. Janet has spoken on how to discover passion and purpose throughout the world and has shared the stage with His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, Dr. Stephen Covey, Sir Richard Branson, Jack Canfield, and many, many others. In addition, she and her business partner, Chris Atwood, arranged 70% of the interviews done for the hit movie, The Secret, which is really cool. That's one I didn't know about. Jan is a living example of what it means to live with an open heart and mind, and her acute ability to listen to her intuition creates magic. And I'm looking forward to sharing your magic with my audience here. Thank so, you. So this new uh, program that you're work, talking about and, and, and teaching about self-love mastery, which is one of my absolute favorite topics, is, uh, is a bit of a departure from the passion test, which I took years ago and, and has been a, is a huge tool around the world as a self-development tool. So tell me about that, uh, that new direction. Yeah, it's so interesting. As I was traveling all over the world, giving the passion test to thousands and thousands of people, and for those of you that don't know what the passion test is, it's the number one tool that's being used around the world, <clears throat> excuse me, to help people get clear on the things that matter most to them, their passions. And what I started to notice, I now have over 4,000 trainers of the passion test that have been certified. But what I, what I noticed, Brad, was that not all of them were out there bringing it up. They come to my program, they get in our love bubble, we shine a light on their greatness, the best of them comes out, and they're all ready to go. And then, right? Yeah. And I'm like, where are they? Where are some of them? What happened? Yeah. And so I really started thinking about it and I thought, I know what happened. Their limiting beliefs hit them in the face the minute they were out of the love bubble and went out on their own. I'm not good enough, rich enough, smart enough, educated enough. I don't have, I'm not Janet Atwood or I'm not Marcy Shimoff or I'm not, you know, comparing themselves to others. Right. And then what they do, they went back to their, what Mark Victor Hansen of Chicken Soup uh, says, is they went back to their J-O-B, they're just over broke. Yeah. Because they just didn't have that self-love to be able to say, this is what I stand for, right? This is really who I am and, and letting it be okay. And that was one thing. Now, the other thing is really, I love vulnerability, authenticity, and transparency. That's, that's it for me. So here's my, here's my transparency. I realized that I could be nicer and I could be more <laughs> loving. And I was thinking, you know, when I pass away, people are not going to go, oh, didn't we just love that she wrote all those books and certified all those people? No, what do we care about? No, no way. That's like, hell no. No, what we care about is how much did she love? Yeah. And I thought, well, what you put your attention on grows stronger in your life. This is a quote from the Passion Test. And I thought, well, if what you put your attention on grows stronger in your life, and I know that, then I want to put my attention on self-love. Yeah. I want to be one of the most loving, I, I, it doesn't even mean to be one of the most, I want to be the most loving human being that I can be. And so I'm putting all my attention into that one. And it's so beautiful because 
And I tell everybody, I am so shameless because I have a self-love certification now too called Mastery of Self-Love yeah. Certification Program. And I'm, I'm shameless about telling people, sign up, sign up, sign up, become one, become one. Not even if you want to go out and do it for anybody else, but for you. Right. You know that saying, the teacher always learns the most. Well, it's true. And love is the highest energy on the planet. So when you put your attention on love, what happens is there's this beautiful quote by my master, Maharishi Mahashogi, that says, love brings up anything unlike itself to be healed. Yes. And so as you're putting your attention on sharing with others about self-love, well, I always like to say, I meet no one but me. That's a really beautiful quote from Marishi, right? So right. You, know, you think you're sharing to someone else, but if they get anything, that's the bonus. But what you're doing is when you share about anything, and in this case, the highest energy on the planet, right? That which really can heal you at the core. What happens is number one, you not only get to learn what you know, but you get to see the gaps of what you don't know. And then you get to go after that. So, and, and my business partner, Chris Atwood, said to me after I'd been sharing about self-love and started the certification program in self-love, he said, I've never seen anybody go faster. He said, you have flipped it and switched it and you are like so loving all the time. And I said, yeah, that's because that's all I'm about now. Yeah. And so passion is a passion, living your passion is actually one of the one of the things that you do to show yourself how much you love yourself right right, Got it? right. yeah right what could be more loving to yourself than to live a life where you're in engaging in what you're passionate about yeah what can be more unloving than to not allow yourself to really listen to what what are we what is living a passionate life anyway it's about being really quiet and starting to listen to the general manager's marching orders. <laughs> Got it? I mean, really, it's not even about you. It's about all of us are part and parcel of what's called the unified field. And we all have a role to play. And that's our give back for the privilege of being in a human body. It's our give back. It's what we're here to, to do to align with those things that are our gifts because that's our gift to serve the world, to be of service to humanity. It's beautiful, isn't it? I, I, I think it's possibly the most beautiful thing there is. And, and as we love ourselves more, we naturally treat others with more love. And yeah, and being passionate and sharing our, our greatest gift. And I always, I always blank on um, who it was that, that said it, who, who was teaching speakers and said, don't try to give the audience what you think they need. Talk about what brings, makes you come alive because what they need is people who have come alive, <laughs> people who have that passion. And so, you know, when we treat ourselves with love and give ourselves the best life possible, sharing our passion, how could that not be the best thing for the world at large? Absolutely. And, and now let's talk about right now, because <laughs> right now we're faced with a new normal. I mean, and what's really interesting to note is, have any of you noticed that all of a sudden those all, you know, many people that you've loved and had these really juicy relationships, all of a sudden they're on a different team. What they think is going on and why they think it's going on and what you think is going on and why you think it's going on all of a sudden is creating this massive separation. And how do, you, how do you handle that? And if you're one of those touchy-feely people like me that, that like, you know, you get, your, you get your mojo going by those really wonderful hugs, how are, you gonna, how are you gonna be able to work it out here on a screen? How are you going to be able to project that energy of, you know, I love you deeply on this screen? And, and how, about, <clears throat> how about people you love that now are voting for someone completely different than who you think. And not only that, but your core values are now at stake. So how do you treat you after you treat them 
when you see, oh my God, really? You're, you, you think that? And so, so this is why self-love right now is so important because what's going on in this new normal, and we can see it, is that there is this huge divide, this huge separation going on in the world. And so many people have said, we're going towards a civil war with each other, with each other. Now, if it's really true that the world is as you are, which I believe, and I meet no one but me, then if each and every one of us was kind to ourselves, yeah. and you really started to take a deep look at where are the areas in myself that I can be kinder? And one of them would be, being kind to you when you're not very cool. When you're <laughs> kind to you when you just said the most awful thing because you're so sick and tired of being pent up or you told your kids go to your room. You know, that's when, and it's easy to be kind when everything's working your way. But how do you treat you when you, you know, when you don't say it right and you don't do it right and you, and, and you don't feel like all positive? How are you treating you? So mastery of self-love, and this is what my whole program is about, is about just really taking a look, a really, really deep look, and looking at where are the areas in you that you're, you're beating yourself up. Because as you treat you, you treat everyone. And giving you the tools and the practices and the, the, the different exercises that you need because Mastering self-love, here, here's the new news <laughs> that's not new. You can't get it from a book, sorry, nope. You, what you need is trust. Trust what? Trust a mentor who can see, who's a seer, who has that ability, who has that intuitive ability. Because I'll, I'll tell you something, Brad, that I find so very fascinating is people come on to my program and they try, because they, they want to be my friend, they, they come on as the perfect person. So I've got to use my little inner tool of, of divine intuition to really be able to see where do they need that shift because they come on looking so solid. Because why? I love this prayer by Byron Katie, who's one of my mentors. Byron Katie has this great process called the work to undo limiting beliefs. And she says, uh, let's see, what is it? God spare me from the desire to seek love, approval, or appreciation. God spare me from the desire to seek love, approval, or appreciation. Mm -hmm. See, each and every one of us, if you'll notice, your freedom completely goes kaboom out the door when, when you're chasing after, and that's what advertisement is all about, trying to get people to love you in, in the outer way. But it's not an outside-in job. It's an inside-out job, and this is what mastering self-love is all about. So I, I talk about it, and I'd love if it's okay to give your listeners my free ebook. Would that be all right? Oh, absolutely. So my Mastering Self-Love, um, what is it? The Miracle of Self-Love, my ebook, and it's got three magical secrets to live a magnificent life. You can just get it at www.selfloveebook.com www.selfloveebook.com. And in that ebook, I give you these really solid tools. And it was so cool. Today, I got an, e I got a, um, an email from this woman who, who had downloaded my ebook when I gave it out on an interview. And she goes, Dearest Janet, I am so thankful. I've been reading your ebook all night. And I want to tell you, I download all kinds of stuff that's out there on the internet, and most of it is crap. And I am so happy <laughs> that you have taken the time to actually give something that has substance to it. So for you guys that want a little substance, www.selfloveebook.com. And, and I'll, put a, I'll put a link in the description box below. So when that you guys would be click so down cool there. Because, you know, I really did strip myself down. I... I, I got to tell you, Brad, my life started out really great. I was probably one of the happiest little kids on the planet. And then at about seven years old, 
my mom, who was my very best friend, I mean, my go-to everything, became a raging alcoholic. Mm. Her doctor had told her, um, she's in the, I'm part Indian Choctaw, and he told her when she would get her monthly cycle, and she had really a rough time, to drink a little whiskey. And the rest, you know, she ended up on the streets of downtown Los Angeles. And, uh. and it really, what happened to me at that young age was, I was like, oh my God, did I do that? Right. right. I thought I did it at seven years old. So at seven years old, my life had this big crack in it. And, and all the way up until, God, I don't know how old, and I'm still practicing self-love. Uh, you know, was defined by this feeling that I did it. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. And so I've been on that journey. I know the hero's journey. And it has been tough because I had sexual abuse in my life. I was strung out on drugs. I rode with the president of the Oakland Hills Angels for a short time. I was a bad girl. Remember I did that? <laughs> That was a little sidebar <laughs> label, right? And it wasn't until I decided, until one day I woke up and I went, oh my God, you know, if I don't shift, I'm going to be just like my mom, right? I'm not going to, it's not going to be okay. So this book is all about my journey and the different tools and practices. I've been there, done that. And, and I got to tell you, here, here's the big find is that I wouldn't, I wouldn't give up a second. Because what I've seen, and, I, and we were talking about this before we came on, Brad, and you agree with me, which was so cool, and we were laughing about it, <laughs> is that every moment matters. Yeah. Every moment matters. And when you can start to take the hairiest, most awful, god-awful moment and reframe it, and really start to ask yourself now, now, after, you know, you can't do anything about the past. The past is the past. Right. How is it serving you? And what you will see is that it always will serve you. It will always be there to serve you. And this is what I teach over and over, over again. Because why? Because people have to learn through repetition. So this is what my whole thing is about now. And it is so good for me. <laughs> and and everyone i yeah as napoleon hill said there's no uh every bit of adversity carries within it the seed of an equal or greater benefit yeah and, your uh, worst stories are your be your worst thing on the planet that happens are everybody's best story yeah. <laughs> I think the best chapter it's terrible to say isn't it but people actually really can relate to pain because we've all had it most everybody has re really knows. Now the key is, yes, as Jenna just said, you've had it, take that and shift. It's not a matter of, oh, well, I haven't had enough pain in my life. I need to go create some more pain. <laughs> no, you've probably had enough already. Let's improve from <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, when you do start to reframe, you start to realize that every moment really is a gift. Yeah. So then you can put your attention on what are you grateful for? Because that's a way different energy. Most people during COVID, this period in our lives, I have become expert in COVID virus. I mean, it is so crazy. <laughs> what you put your attention on grows stronger. Why would you do that? Right. So you wanna put your attention on what? On the aspects of your life that you're so grateful for. You know, there's this saying in the Vedas, from abundance comes abundance and abundance remains. So you want to put your attention on what's working. And so start to reframe all those hairy moments in your life that you're using as your story to be depressed. It's not working for you. I want you to notice what you're going to get is you get to have a pity party. You get to have other depressed people, you know, have a chat with you and you get to go deeper in your depression. So now it's time. This is, this time is so valuable. Uh, all of us, it's like Mother Nature said, all right, kids, go to your room. God, go <laughs> to your room. You're <laughs> off. So you need to like line it up. We need a reset. <laughs> yeah, a reset. Yeah, cosmic spiritual reset, right? Right. Right. Yeah. It, and we're going off the tracks. <laughs> and it's like, okay. And no one's, and too many people are not paying attention. It's like, all right. <laughs> That's Everything it. has to come to a stop. Let's That's all it. let's all be clear now. There's there's a problem here.
That's it. And, uh, well, there's an opportunity. An, an opportunity, exactly. And because every problem is an opportunity. And, and I think that you said really self-love is the key, you know, or certainly one of the keys, but, but perhaps the most important key, if, if we can take this, this reset and go, okay, to learn uh, self-love because all of the stuff that's going on that is so challenging and, and at times hateful all comes from a lack of self-love. Well, yeah. And yes, absolutely. I mean, think about it. The worst perpetrator, if you're clear, if you're clear, you can notice that they're what? They're in massive pain and that's the only way they can, ah, I gotta get it out, right? right? And, and one thing is that in this time, it's so important to let it be okay that it's not okay. I mean, it's not okay that we have racism. It's not okay. It's not okay that, that people are starving. That it's not okay that people are dying you know, thousands and thousands of people all over the world, right? We're in our millions. I mean, it's crazy. It's not okay. And what's, what is self-love is being okay with what you were not okay with and being okay that it's not okay and allowing yourself to be kind to you no matter what, because this is one heck of a challenging time. <laughs> No, really. And let it be okay that you are not that perfect person. Right. Because why? Now, here's why. It's not like, oh, what are you? You mean I should perpetuate being a jerk? No. But what I don't want people to do is put pain on pain. So when you see yourself not doing it right, not doing the perfect thing, because we all have this perfect thing, yeah. treating yourself as you would a little baby. You know, you wouldn't, if a baby made a mistake, you wouldn't take that baby and throw it against the wall. Guy, you jerk. No. So I want you to come back to self-love 101. This is self-love 101 time. And be kind to you and go, okay, whoa, breathe. You know, that, okay, I'm doing my best. And we all are in every moment. We're doing the very, very best. If we could do better, guess what? We'd have done it. Yeah. And, then, and then get up and do it again. But take a minute. And don't put pain on pain by lambasting yourself and telling yourself how awful you are, stupid jerk. How you, da, 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 da. Because then you become one of those other people that the minute you walk out the door, the minute your little kid comes up to you, what do you do? You flip it out on them. Yeah. And that's, that's what we got to stop. And how do we stop that? By being kind to ourselves. That's self-love. That's self-compassion self and recognizing that yeah, that we we are doing the best we can in any given moment, given the circumstances, given our past programming, yeah, and and beating ourselves into <laughs> trying to beat ourselves into improvement, it just doesn't exactly. work. <laughs> exactly, and what's important is that how you treat you, you treat everyone. Yeah. So if you can get your attention, bring your attention back home to you then that will be the maximum that you can give to humanity right now. And all of us, I know all of us have a desire to be a giver. So the giving has to start here. Right. How are you treating you and where do you need to upgrade? And it's not like, okay, you know, no, it's like just right now, right now, right now, right now. How are you treating you? And, and that's it. You know, it's like, it's okay. It's okay if you ate that chocolate bar last night. It's okay. It's okay that you ate 20 of them. It's <laughs> okay. No, really. Because you know, when you go, God, you fat pig, how can you be so awful? Then what happens is there's a big charge on fat pig. You have put a lot of attention on that. And reticular activation system, it says that whatever you put your attention on, it, what it does, it's like, it's like a computer, garbage in, garbage out. Right. And it starts to draw to you the people, the places, the things to show you in your life, oh, you're right, you are awful for eating those 20 chocolate bars. And then what do you do? The next time you eat 50, this is how we perpetuate that cycle. So it's got to stop somewhere in, a, in, a, in nature, in God, nature. I always say nature, God, higher power, the universe, whatever name you want to put. Right. to that energy that's greater than yourself is just asking you 
to get real simple right now. Nature is simple. Nature is efficient and be kind to you. And what you'll notice when you don't do it right and you just go, okay, you did your best. Okay, and take that breath in. Then the next time there won't be that pain on pain and it, and it'll be easier to, to take that better step that gives you what you ultimately really want in your life. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, I'm just a question. <laughs> Brad, Brad, here's Brad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Wait, let's think about that. Oh, because right. you're totally singing my song here. So, <laughs> and so here's, here's an interesting question that, that has come up for me when I'm um, teaching self-love that a lot of people will say, but if I, if I love myself after eating the 20 chocolate bars, then I'll, I won't bother to, uh, to get in better shape. You know, if I already love myself right where I'm at, uh, in whatever shape I'm in physically, financially, emotionally, if I say, well, I'm worthy of love right now, why would I even bother to try to improve? So I love that. Throw that yeah. over you. Well, okay. Notice that when you're, when you're beating yourself up, that is not when you take action, you're contracted, right. you're in pain, right? You're feeling awful. That's not when you go, okay, no, it's when you start to open and you start to expand. So, and, and here's what's interesting. Now, that, that was such a great thing that you said. That was brilliant. We all have this inner GPS. And let me ask you, I'm going to ask you this really weird question. Now, when the sun goes up or the sun comes down or the moon goes up or the moon goes down, where is there more value? Moon up, moon down, sun up, sun down. What one? Down, up. What one? Where is it more valuable? It would depend on so many things. It depends on if, if, you, if you like the view of the moon, then it's more valuable when it comes up. <laughs> but, well, but no, that's just an individual <laughs> preference, but... Right, but, but right. ultimately there's no... It, it's always that's there. That's it, you win the prize. Yeah, absolutely. When the sun goes up and the sun goes down, both are valuable, both have to happen, right? Right. Right. I mean, how many of us sat and watched the sunset and went just, oh, thank you, God. Now, here, so let me ask you this. When you're expanded, what's it, what's a, what's it look like in your body? Give me a body look for expanded. I'm expanded. Come on, what would you look like? <laughs> yeah, right? it just feels... <sighs> yeah, I don't think, I'm open. See, you, this is openness. Now, what does contraction look like to you? If that's a body language for expanding, what's contraction look like? Yeah, yeah. that. Oh, yeah, hang like, that upset and a fetal, yeah. right? That little fetal moment. So, let me ask you this: What is more valuable, being contracted or being expanded? Uh, excellent point. Yeah. There are preferences, but in terms of value, it all has value. Yeah, now let me tell you why. See, but, but now let me ask you this, Brad. Come on, and I don't want you to be spiritual. Sometimes <laughs> when you're not positive, you have to get hard on yourself because you should be all positive because you have this show. Let me ask you, come on, truth. Do you ever think I should know more? I should oh, be of course, of course. I should be more enlightened. I should be farther along, right? Okay, now, here, here's the point, case in point. When you feel that way, are you expanded or are you contracted? Yeah, and those are the, the moments of the contraction. Yeah, and now here's a different way to look at when you're not the perfect you. When you're angry, depressed, sad, disappointed in who you're being, that's nature's guidance. Nature, your inner GPS says, that is the time where you don't take action. Because why? Because you're contracted, right? That's more of a contraction. So what, what nature, or God or higher power, whatever you name you want to put to it, is asking you to do is be there for you. That's your me time. Me time meaning let me ask you, Brad, when you're not feeling all Brad expanded, <laughs> what are some of the things that you like to do that, that help you to start to open? What is it? 
Well, uh, probably no surprise to anyone watching this that my first thing I generally do is go to tapping because <laughs> I when I have that, it's like okay, I have something to process here, and I'm and, and I've said this in a lot of different things. It's it's I honor the feeling. It's not a matter of oh bad feeling, get away the bad feeling. It's right. a matter of okay, there's something going on that I need to process, and it, and, and there's actually a, a kind of an excitement there. You know, I I have that moment of I should be more evolved than that. That I just had that thought. But there's also this thought of, oh, well, I thought I was doing pretty good. This just means that I can do even better. There's, a, there's even more expansion for me out there. Okay, so I didn't, so obviously that, now that was great. Now, what I really was trying to get to though, is what is something that you do, like go walk in nature, call a supportive friend who won't buy into your sob story, <laughs> um, you know, listen to some uplifting music, read some great literature, what is, meditate, yoga, what is something that you do or some of the things that you do that help you to start to feel more expanded? Yeah, well, we have a new one in the last, uh, in the last week, we, uh, we rescued a, a, a kitten. So, so that's the, you know, one of my go-to things for right now is go play with a kitty cat. <laughs> Oh, but isn't that fantastic? And what what else would you do? That's fantastic. That's one. Yeah, going going for a walk is definitely definitely one. Listening to something inspirational while I go for a long walk, getting getting out in nature is uh, is definitely one of my go tos for shifting perspective. And do you ever use any? And so those are different things, and those are fabulous. This is so great. And you want to when you contracted. What I'm going to tell you, write them down on a little three by five card. What I, what I need to do when I'm contracted, I call it your emergency use. <laughs> because when you're contracted, you can't remember what makes you feel more expanded. Yeah. So, you know, and what about, do you ever do anything mental like Ho'oponopono or the Sedona method or the work of Byron Katie? You know, any of those. I love are, all three of those. Right? Yeah. So for all of you listening, Contraction is not a bad thing. It's your inner GPS that is saying, it's time for me to stop yes. and give myself me time by doing something that helps me to expand again. Doesn't that make sense? And then when you're expanded, that's when you go for it. That's when you do your podcast or your <laughs> interviews or, you know, like go, go out and get everybody together and, you know, chat it up. And that, that's when you communicate clearly. And usually your contraction is around someone else, what your feelings are. Yeah. But, you know, how's it worked for you in the past when you're communicating when you're contracted to someone? <laughs> Not so well. <laughs> yeah. So this is all about self-love, self-love, loving the self, giving the self what it needs, not having, I love this quote, it's by Rumi, out beyond right doing and wrong doing, there's a field, I'll meet you there. Yeah. Now for me, what that means is, there is no right, when you're clear, there's no right, there's no wrong, there just is. And so a contracted state for any of us is just nature's guidance, trying to tell us this is time to be there for yourself. That's self-love, stopping is self-love giving yourself what you need, yeah. huh? loving yeah. the self and not trying to push yourself, force it to be something you're not. And that is when you really become authentic and vulnerable and transparent. And when you become all of those things, what you'll find is that you'll get into an elevator, you get on the bus and everyone is so intimate to yourself that it's as if they're you because when you totally allow yourself to be you and that means all of you not just the you that you want to show up on youtube on but all of you that's when you'll be loving kindness for the rest of the world that that was so beautifully put that I, I'm like, okay, I think we may have to just end it right there. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I had a, I had a thought or another question. It's like, no, that was, that was so sublime that uh, perfect. Perfect. Thank
Thank you so much, Janet. Um, and yeah. obviously for everyone in the description box, click the link below to, uh, to find out, to, to get Janet's book, the, the free book, to find out about the, the Mastery of Self-Love program and, and so many other things about Janet. And you, you're awesome. I'm, I'm so pleased that we finally got to connect in this way. And thank you so oh, much I'm for sharing you your up. wisdom. I just love you up. I mean, you are a beauty. I, you are just wonderful to be with. Thank you. My, my honor. Oh, thank you.